Now, I already mentioned that you're able to do this, but I, I want to demonstrate a few of them. Um, like for instance, a Mozart stroke uh, has a little bit more of a brushed sound. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of coming at it from straight above, this is the most severe vertical angle, I'm going to come, I'm going to flatten that attack out. So instead of coming down like this, I'm going to come at it more soft, more at a low angle. And I probably am going to turn the hair out a little so I, I can flatten out the ribbon of hair on each bounce. And you can hear how it gets a much softer sound, less severe attack. And you can see that I'm moving side to side more than I am up and down. That's one of the key elements of this stroke is that I go side to side instead of up and down. Now if I wanted to suddenly shift to like a more hammered stroke, all of a sudden the equation would change. Instead of moving side to side like this, I'm going to go up and down more and load it with the weight of my arm. Now you can see that the angle I'm attacking at is almost vertical. And you can see that I'm loading it with my whole arm is shaking. I'm, I'm throwing my arm into the string. And I might move it a little closer to the frog. And that creates this great ferocious bark of the bass. Which is, which is really fun for, uh, you know, certain things. I'll get teased at that because I always play that. Um, <laughs> but that, that's, that's the fundamental of that stroke. And somewhere in between might be what you'd use for that Beethoven I was playing. Something more like that. The great thing about this stroke is you can actually pause in mid-stroke and think about what you're doing. Like in that excerpt, for instance, I like being able to pause and, and each time I pause I'm thinking of how I'm going to grow in the next few notes. When I put it together, I sometimes can get a nice crescendo. Like that. So that's that's some of the ways you can vary this stroke. It can go from like a martelet, which is a very vertical stroke, to more of the uh, the brushed Mozart stroke, to um, somewhere in between. And uh, I, I really like it. One of the things I want to talk about as well about this stroke is in general, as I go onto the top string, I'm going to use more of a rub, and as I go to the thicker lower strings, I'm going to reduce my rub and go more towards the literal ricky ticky. And the reason I do that is because as you go into the lower register, the bass rings a lot more, and the vibrations are wider. So that's almost identical. I mean, that's a really short stroke. But I might err on that side for the sake of cleanliness. They're on a, a C string, you can even hear all the notes. And this is literally the Ricky Ticky stroke, just grabbing it and letting it go in each direction. You can see the string flex and release. As I go up, let's say I play a scale. As I get up to the G string, I'm going to soften it and make it more like the Mozart stroke. And the sound will actually remain somewhat the same. One of the most common problems I see my students run into when they're trying to, to take the Ricky Ticky stroke, just the pluck, and add the rub to it, is that a lot of times they'll they, they exaggerate the rub too much and they think they have to do it very quickly. Most of the speed in the stroke happens vertically. And when you actually set it down on the string, the moment it's touching the string, it should again be a cross section of that long, beautiful note. And you can see how slow this long, beautiful note is moving. It's not, it's not, it's not like that. <laughs> and a lot of people, when they're when they're trying to speed it up or, or play this off the string stroke and add a rub, they start doing something like this, where they're not actually they're skating over the top of the string. And usually what happens is I'll, I'll tell them to go back to the Ricky Ticky and try just um, do a couple of them, set the bow down, and pull a straight note. As if you weren't even bouncing, just from the air, grab the string and pull. Off, 
grab the string and pull off, grab the string and pull off, grab the string and pull. And try to get literally cross sections of that long, beautiful note. And each of the tiny notes that you're grabbing from the air, when they're touching the string, should be at the same speed as that nice note. So you get something like this. And it, sometimes it helps to, to go back to doing this a couple times where they do a, a bunch of notes in a row but as part of this long beautiful note and then have them take the length of one of those just play one there's one of them then play that same one in each direction with a tiny lift at the end and sometimes that helps um, th this is probably the trickiest part of learning this stroke is going from dribbling the bow and the little tick to being able to somehow combine it with the beauty of the on the string stroke. Which is really what you want. One of the things when I have a student in front of me that, that I usually try to do is I'll, I'll start attacking the problem from uh, eight or nine different angles and I'll, I'll eventually start zeroing in on what the real problem is. It's obviously impossible for me to do that because I have no idea who's watching this. Um, but I'm trying to throw out some of the ideas uh, of how to deal with the problems and a lot of times what happens is you can go back to this the basic beginning of the stroke and build it again. And if you keep going back to that zero point and adding little things in, eventually you can kind of isolate which part of it specifically is throwing you the loop. Um, and that can that, that is really the problem solving that goes on in a lesson. Um, but there's no reason you can't do it on your own uh, to some degree. In fact, you, you have to be able to because that's what practicing is. <laughs> there actually is a stroke that happens between an off the string stroke and an on the string stroke. You know, somewhere between this where I'm, I'm coming off a mile and this where I'm not coming off at all exists a stroke where the stick is bouncing, but the hair doesn't leave the string. And there's a little lift at the end where I release the weight, but I don't actually take the bow off. This is a very useful stroke for playing clean. And uh, I, I use it all the time. And especially as you start playing fast and off the string stroke, eventually you don't have time to really come off. And so, um, uh, I'm trying to think of something to play, but uh, even if I took that, that same Beethoven excerpt, I'm really not flying off the string. I'm keeping it as close as I can so I can play fast. And it, as I speed it up, it is going to get smaller, and by virtue of that, eventually, you can see this, the bow bouncing but the hair really is staying with the string.